All right, man. <laughs> We're back. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did you make this by hand, like, uh, with a, uh, a chisel knobber? PCB way, you, like, send them your stuff, and, and they make the PCB for you, and then they, they send it in the post. Oh, uh, what about this piece? Basically, I made the file on a computer, I sent it to PCB way, and, and they have a CNC machine, they cut it all out, and they, they send it to you in the post again. What about the enclosure? Did you use that, uh, new technique? Where they uh, I'm just gonna stop you there. All right. Um, they package it all up and uh, send it in the post. Oh, okay, yeah. I'm yeah. When designing a speaker, people often ask, How do you get started? For me, it starts with a vision of where I want to use the speaker and how I want it to look and sound. Because I just moved to Texas, I wanted something that was small and compact but packed a lot of power and looked great in my apartment. So when you design a product, there's three main criteria and you often end up compromising on at least one. Those are cost, performance, and time to complete the project. On paper, performance should be really good. I'm using the same custom Bluetooth amplifier. I made a video on here, but this time I changed out the Bluetooth module for a brand new Fizicom module that supports Bluetooth 5.2 and has a 24 bit audio codec. So it sounds great. I've packed it full of lots of drivers with two down firing subwoofers and two full range speakers doing the mids and highs. I didn't compromise on cost. I used high grade materials like anodized aluminium and a really high quality 3D print from PCB Way, which I'll get into later. Because I didn't have my workshop with me or any 3D printers, I tried to get everything right first time in CAD, which was my way of trying to save time, which caused me quite a few issues down the line, which I'll also get into. So that being said, Let's jump into it. When I was designing the speaker, I was relying really heavily on these threaded inserts, which allow you to use a soldering iron to push them into a hole in the 3D print, and then you can bolt in whatever you need. Unfortunately, I didn't realize PCB Way would spray paint the plastic. So when I came to do it, well, it wasn't so great. Here's how it should be if you just have a standard 3D print. So there's no smoke, it goes in nicely. And then that's it. You can now put a bolt in there and it should stay in. Here's the same thing that I just spray painted earlier today. Yeah, so um, not so great when the thing's spray painted. <clears throat> oh, yeah, there it goes. So what I ended up doing was drilling out all of the holes and using epoxy instead, which wasn't as strong, but it did get the job done. So Johnny, what actually went well with the speaker? We designed this speaker and I, I hesitate at the word speaker because what we're really doing is encapsulating the beauty of music and humanity and channeling it out into the world and to encapsulate that we created this anodized aluminium front so beautiful that some have said they're unable to look at it because it's so distracting from the music on the base we've used that same anodized aluminium for these beautiful feet, which are magnetic. And the beauty of that is, when you place it on any surface, one, it will fall off, but two, the whole speaker can slide. So you can remove them for no reason at all. On the rear, we have these passive radiators to accentuate the bass notes created by these down firing subwoofers that are so earth shattering that actually some people have died when using the speaker. On the top, for the first time ever in a product, a button that when you turn the speaker on has an LED indicator, LED indicator to show that the device is in fact powered and ready for use. Overall, we've created a package so beautiful and so easy to use um, that some people, including Donald Trump, have said Steve Jobs would be proud. So how does this thing actually sound? 
Well, it's always difficult to tell for a YouTube video, but let's find out. So overall, the speaker is very punchy. It packs a lot of bass for its size. Having those downfiring subwoofers and the rear passive radiators uh, really help it hit low bass notes, which is pretty surprising given the overall size of the speaker. I'd say the mids are pretty precise, like you can make out all the different instruments, the voice. Um, it's very like accurate with its sound. There are a couple of resonant frequencies where like the whole speaker will vibrate and it's only apparent in some songs. If you had your own analysis software like Ansys, you can look at like if there's gonna be resonant frequencies and design around it. Like if I put in more baffles in the speaker, you could probably solve it. Um, but yeah, it is a little distracting. So if, if I'm gonna remake this, that's like the main thing I would fix. And then honestly, like all around a great speaker, like very, very happy with it. So yeah. So did I hit all of my design criteria? Well, it does pack a punch, it is portable, and as far as I'm concerned, it looks great. There are those resonant frequencies that I wanna fix, but that will be another prototype for another time. So if you enjoyed this video, please get subscribed. I'll make a new video every one to two years and be that random speaker dude that pops up on your homepage. But with that being said, thank you so much for watching. Keep designing, keep making, and keep on. Ha <laughs> <laughs>